We have, remember, we live in the world, but we are no longer of the world. How many can say amen? Amen. Amen. That means that we have a choice every day to walk with God in the spirit within his kingdom or choose to walk, you know, like we normally do. This is the wrestling that goes on. We got some wonderful answers for that today. dismiss anybody. We're okay, we're fine. All right, here's the thing. The Bible says that God sows his word in good ground, and we have learned so far that God does everything spiritually. Can you say amen? amen. And we found out too that God threw Satan out of the spiritual realm. He can operate in a realm we don't understand, but it's, he's no longer allowed in the holy spiritual realm that you and I can come in Jesus. Can you say amen? That's why Paul constantly, Peter, everyone, Jesus talked about it. That when the Holy Spirit comes, we are to learn, be trained how to walk in the spirit realm. Say amen. In fact, if you read 1 Corinthians 12, this is concerning being spiritual, brethren. I don't want you to be ignorant. Hello. And so we need to learn about spiritual things because how many know, think about it, spiritual things come first and then physical things come second. Amen. I mean, it happens first in the spirit, then it happens later in the physical. Think of Adam when he fell. He died first spiritually and then later on physically. When we get something from God, God downloads it on good ground. See, I'm good ground. It comes directly into our spirit man. You see, if we engage our head too much, what I mean by that, our own reasoning and picking apart things. Now listen, sometimes we come to church with a preconceived idea. And it shuts out any other thing God might want to teach us. Some money say, not me. So I always recommend when you come to church, come like a child. Come wanting to learn, wanting to know. Amen? come because we have to be operated in the spirit. We have to operate in the spirit. So God downloads it to our heart in the spirit. Now listen, if our mind is somewhere else, if our, our, our concentration is on us for some reason, then our, we're not in the spirit realm. We're in the physical realm. Doesn't mean we're, we're wrong, but we need to be in the spirit. Now how did I share? We've taught this and people are picking it up all over. How do we get in the spirit? BJ says, Father, in Jesus' name. And then, boom, God moves us in the spirit. Amen. So if you're ever wondering why everything is getting to you, you might want to stop for a minute and say, Lord, whatever I might be doing wrong, cleanse me. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, boom, you'll, all of a sudden, he'll write anything that might be off. How many know that we're supposed to run spirit, soul, and body and supposed to be in unity with ourselves? Say Amen. And I taught, oh, I don't know, about six months ago about being out of phase. Hello. 
Hello, out of phase means your spirit wants to go one way, you've got your soul thinking about so many other things, and your flesh just wants to stay in bed. Say amen, somebody. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into our lesson. This is so cool. I'm glad I get to share this. And you notice we have this prop up here. This prop is going to be part of my lesson. And we've been doing a, a particular teaching series. So if you can go back in our archives, you can actually download them on your YouTube Reigning in life in Christ, amen? Now, I have been concerned for years, and God has spoken to me, that Christians need to do more than what I call shotgun prayer. Do you know what a shotgun does? I mean, uh, people that hunt, people that do target practice, a shotgun can either shoot a slug, one individual thing, or a whole bunch of BBs. And I think a lot of Christians are doing a lot of shotgun prayers, which no, with no purpose nor specific targets. And you know what? I come to share with you today that God wants us to learn that when we pray, we, we are in a war, and God wants us to pray. But we're not, now listen, we're not in a war for ourselves. We're already saved. Can you say amen? amen. We're not in a war for ourselves. We're in a war for others that are not saved. Do you have fam family members that don't know the Lord? Children, grandchildren? We're for, how about neighbors, friends? We're in a warfare for their souls. Because didn't Jesus say it's finished? That means the war has been won. And then when he went down to hell, he just took the keys from Satan. He didn't beat him in the head. No, Jesus beat him in the head when he died on the cross and shed his blood. Say amen, somebody. And then just went down in the spirit, took it from him, and then liberated Abraham's bosom or led captivity captive. Say amen. And then he went. Forty days after his ascension, the Holy Spirit came and brought a new kingdom called the kingdom of heaven. We're going to learn about that today. So in our prayers, we need to have targeted prayers. We need to be able to talk and speak, bring God in. We found out, everyone, remember... We have not because we have not. You see, God needs invitation. Amen. You, he didn't jump on you and make himself into your heart. You had to ask God politely to come into your heart. And you know, a prideful person, a person that's so into themselves will never do that. And if they did, they won't live for him because they're too busy living for them. So let's not stay there. We ask to ask God to get involved. Now, do you know there are people out this? I know this is going to surprise you, Tina. But there are people out there that don't know that they can pray and ask God. They think God's mad at everybody. Let me just tell you, God is not the cause of all this mess in the earth. Mankind is because they're listening to the wrong God. His name is Satan. Everything that's evil, everything that's deceptive, everything that is dark and hidden comes from him. Everything that is good, everything that's perfect, perfect love. Listen, this is for somebody here today. Perfect love will cast out your afraid, being afraid. The more you spend time with God, the more your fear will go away. Amen. That was for one particular person. I don't know who. God just spoke to you. But so we've got to spend the time that we need to absorb the presence of God and let the light shine out. Say amen. Now here's how tough the devil is. He's darkness, isn't he? Okay, now listen to me carefully. Remember, he's a deceiver. See, so he wants to make you think he's so tough. And so we think he's so tough and he becomes tough. We believe in he, what he says, and that thing which we fear comes upon us. No. We spend time with God, and God teaches us his word, teaches us how to love one another, teaches us how to walk in. Everyone say, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Now, if, if we turned off all the lights in this room and shut off all the doors and everything, so you couldn't even see in front of your nose, and I hollered, Fire! You would have to feel around to get yourself out safely, wouldn't you? Now listen, here's a parable. That's what the people in the world who are lost are doing. 
They're having to find, trying to find God by feeling their way out. Do you get it? Out of what, Carrie? Out of a terrible life into a greater life in Christ. Hello? Seek and you shall. And then when you have found, ask and it shall be. <laughs> and then knock and the door shall be. You know, the whole thing pr- progresses. So, amen. So I'm going to go ahead and read our, our, our scriptures. And then we're gonna, I'm going to read my paragraph after that, okay? So let's go ahead and turn around and let's uh, have our scriptures. I'm going to read them from here. My wife set up the notes for me and it's so wonderful. Amen. In fact, I give you a hand clap. All right, so we're going to look at three scriptures dealing with targeted warfare. Say amen. I got to take a swig of this. I sung my heart out to the Lord. All right, number one, first of all, we're given authority. So John 1.12 says, read along with me, but as many as received him, how many here received Jesus? To them he gave the right, or that's the Greek word, authority, to become children of God. So because you have Jesus, now listen, in your heart, God the Father looks as you are his now. Wow, you mean God accepts me? Yeah, because you ask Jesus to come in your heart, God totally accepts you. Now what do you mean? When you adopt somebody, you get the bad with the good. Go come on, smile up at me. He gets the whole package of us. And then we turn our life over to him. How many know that he accepts us for who we are, but he doesn't leave us in that condition? Amen. We walk with him and he cleans us up and he begins to show us things. Now here is where the devil comes in. He's a disruptor. He disrupts our livelihood with God. His job is to disrupt If you've already received God, disrupt your walk with God so that you become frustrated all the time. Something's always breaking down. Listen to me. I'm talking to you. Something's always trying to agitate you. Now, that's not the walk of God, but we can overcome that. Say amen. But we need to find out that anything that's a trial, a test, that agitates us, we know doesn't come from the hand of God. Did you know 60% of the body of Christ still still think that God somehow is using crud, mud, blood, and and junk to teach his children? Now think about the logic in that. Is God perfect? So how would he teach his children? By instruction. Not by using the enemy to beat his children half to death so they'll love God more. I had a son and played with matches just like I did when I was a kid. You know, my dad didn't take my hand, put it over the flame, burn my hand and say, you'll never do that again. No, that's a cruel, mean, abusive thing. Listen, many Christians today don't know their God as clear as they need to. And that's why God wants you to know and be able to teach about him. You need to be able to teach the dividing line. First of all, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So anything that brings darkness, hiding, us being dishonest, or we want to hide something. Remember, what we hide, God exposes. What we expose to God, God hides so that we're not exposed. You go to God with all your problems, you see. You follow what I'm saying? So it's very important that we understand how there are systems and they operate. So we need to learn to walk in the Spirit. So God is light. In him is no darkness at all. We know the dark one and the creator of sin is Lucifer. Now he's Satan. Lucifer, split toe, cling on. He's called all different kinds of names. He does all the evil in the world. So I didn't know that, Pastor Gary. Yes, he's the one that causes all corruption. Okay? Hello, all corruption. What is God doing? He's trying to get us out of this. Hello? Let's, for example, you're a wonderful parent, and if you accidentally drop your child in an open garbage pit, wouldn't you reach down and pull them out? Hello? Adam threw us into a garbage pit, even though the most beautiful planet ever created. There's others, too, but this one is for us. 
Satan came in, made it a garbage pit, corrupted it, causes everything to break down, everything to cause it to be a trial. Now, I'm going to teach you how to overcome. Jesus taught his disciples how to overcome, not how to sit in the mess. We're going to teach how God wants to pull us out of this. Say amen. How many know that God wants you better every day? Amen. He wants you healthier every day. It'd be foolish to just settle for things. Christians settle all. I go through this pain every year if I don't get this, if I don't have that. Wait a minute, that's earthly wisdom. It doesn't come from above. Everything Jesus preached, he said, one of the questions he asked was, do you want to be whole? Do you want to be made whole? Oh, you see, and that's how we've been because the system has been so corrupted. But look, look up. How many, oh, my friend, look up. When we look up, we see who? Jesus. When we focus on his word, we see Jesus. We see light. One other thing you need to know, Christian, oh, believers know this, that God is good and perfect. Hello? God is what? Say it louder. God is? Good and perfect. Well, within reason. But he is. So think about it. So anything that isn't good and perfect must either have been affected, corrupted, or isn't from God. Say amen. amen. So you can look at things, and our job is not to judge poorly. Our job as a believer is to put on the Jesus glasses and discern good from evil. You know, there's some bad teaching out there that will literally make you stumble. And without the knowledge of these things, you know, you have to have the Jesus glasses on it. What do you mean? Watch his life. Look at what he said, did, and everything. That's how God wants you to perform and act and help God help you to do that. But see, if you start judging and doing all that, you're going to have an abundance of trials and tests. All right, so you've been given authority as a child of God. Say amen. amen. Matthew uh, 16, verse 19. Listen to this. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Keys unlock and lock things, don't they? Of heaven, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Hello? To bind means to tie up, <clears throat> and to loose means to let go. So let me paint a close, a close picture. Let's imagine a garden hose. To bind up means turn the nozzle off. To release or to loose means to turn the nozzle on. Say amen. Now look at your neighbor and say, you're the nozzle. Are you turned on for God, letting God out, or are you turned off, doing your own thing? Your job is to let out of your belly rivers of living water to spring out, well springs of life water. Hello? And we're not to hide the light of a bushel. We're not to not be the salt of the earth. We are to get out there where people can taste the life that you and I live when we live for God. That's just, the way, that's just the way it is for us. We are children of God, and, and for our new sisters and everything, it is important to realize that we're not sinners, saved by grace. No, we were sinners. Grace is saving. We're walking with Jesus. Now we have a kingdom we walk in. We walk in the Spirit. And so going back, God downloads his word into our spirit. And if we're listening, it'll come up into our understanding. And you'll be able to walk in the victory as it's revealed to you. Now, there's certain patterns in your life that keep happening over and over again. You should really recognize that pattern. Because that pattern, if it's breaking you, it's causing the same thing to repeat itself. There's a demon out there somewhere working a pattern on you. Remember, Satan doesn't know your future. God does. Go to him. But he runs patterns on you, rhythms on you. He knows carry from his past. So anything that would tempt me would be the rhythms that I knew in my background because he doesn't know what tomorrow is going to bring in my life. Everyone say, I have the victory. 
All right, let's go to the next scripture. Look at this. This is God's message to all of us, how he equips us. In Luke 10, 18 and 19 says, and he said to them, and he's saying to us, okay, he's saying to his disciples, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Okay. They asked him, he said, look, even the devils are subject to us, Jesus. You put your hands on us and you told us to go. And man, we're having a great success. But see, their eyes quickly got off the reason why they had success on the success. They got so caught up in doing the things that God asked them to do, they forgot about loving the God who gave them the power to do it. Hello? And that's how every revival has been overcome by the enemy, is getting people to worship the tools and what happens instead of the one who makes it happen. Say, oh me. So he says, and he said, I saw Satan fall lightning from heaven when did that happen before Adam and Eve. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents, scorpions over all. How much? All the power or the authority of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now what he did, so you understand, is he released the anointing of heaven. Remember, he's a hose. So he's got the valve open and he's letting his father, and as he imparted to them, released the anointing. So that's what we do. We release God in the earth. When he did that, they were in each one were encapsulated under his anointing. In order to have authority, you have to come under a greater authority. Amen. I said, in order to have any power at all, you have to submit to the one who has all the power. Say amen. And most amen. Christians can't... Now listen, most Christmas, Christians, and I don't mean to hurt anyone, but you know what? Our development with God has nothing to do whether God favors you or not. It has to, everything to do how much attention you pay. How well you walk with him. Right. And you see what Satan has done is he made everybody religious. And we're all looking at the big churches and the big words. And we're all flapping around like a bunch of immature people. Instead of focusing after our shepherd like we're supposed to. And develop. You see, if, if all of a sudden God starts bringing people into my life again. I should have my stuff together enough to be able to help them. So we have that. Now listen, I give you. Now, folks, this is still the Old Testament. If they could get that authority then, how much authority do you think we have now? Can you say amen? All right, so I want to just say to you, church, Jesus already won our battle for us and set up a spiritual kingdom for us to operate in and, listen, and to rest and be well in. We're supposed to be resting and well, even though we can slap the devil around with Jesus. I'll explain later. We are in a war, yes, but not for us, but for the lost souls and to spread the good news and the power of God's kingdom. Say amen. amen. Especially to lost souls. How can they hear if nobody tells them? Folks, why do I preach healing? Why do I preach gospel? Why do I preach things that open your eyes to things? Because if nobody tells you it's there, how can you believe for them? Wow, isn't that what Jesus did? I'm not trying to like myself like Jesus, but that's what a preacher is supposed to do. Preach up and preach revelation to show you things. Then you and your faith and walk with Jesus can go after. See, amen. We are the salt of the earth. Man, everything else that's evil, darkness, more salty you get, the more you kill the darkness, the more the slug slithers away. I love that part. You are the light of the world. Light chases away darkness, doesn't it? Why do we comment? Why don't we let things bother us when we shut down the light that way? No, let the light shine. If something happened, maybe you blew it, focus on the light anyway. God will fix the rest. <laughs> hey Amen. Remember the little person that pulled in front of you, ruined your whole day because you wouldn't let it go. We are the light of the world. These are, 
are who we are. Folks, we're just salt and light. Amen. But one other thing, you are a weapon. How many know you are a weapon? How many figured that out? Come on, wave at me. How many didn't know you were? Well, yes, you are. Who lives in you? Who are you to bring into all the world? Everywhere you go, you're bringing Jesus. Are you bringing yourself to people and charming them? Or are you bringing Jesus to them? Jesus. Amen. If they're a dying garden or dying plant, spray a little Jesus on them. Leave somebody every time you wish somebody with a thought of God. Folks, the world's trying to get God out of here. We're trying to bring God back as long as he comes. When he comes, we'll be gone. And there'll be a mess left. You don't want to go through that. Say amen. All right, now look at this. All right. We're the, all these, we are to be weaponized, and that's how warfare is. God needs to train us to fight like Jesus fought. How many here only saw Jesus got upset a couple times in the gospel when they made the house of God a den of thieves? Right? That's about all. And it was done by religious people, and they was angry at religion because they yelled, crucify him. But I want to tell you that God never operates out of stress or fear or anything that's agitation. When you learn to pray, you go, Father, in Jesus' name, and God puts you up into the realm of the Spirit. We do not fight on our knees. We fight in heaven before the throne. Hello? So you don't know it. Father, in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit brings you right up. Now you're before the throne. Is there any devil there? Any, any devil listening into your prayers? No. Uh, no. Amen. Believe it or not, no. Because you said Father in Jesus' name. Hello? Read your Bible. When it says Father in Jesus' name, boom, you're in the spirit realm where Satan cannot go or listen or look into. Guess what? You become a blind curtain to him. The moment you say, Father, in Jesus' name, boom, you disappear. And all he says is Jesus. You've got to understand that. So if you're having a bad day, you've been focused, something's gone a little haywire, just stop and speak, Father, in Jesus' name, take over. You come into faith, say amen. So we're going to explain what that thing is. Sorry to turn my back at you. All right, so let's go ahead and get on. All right, we're going to cover four areas. Are you ready? For number one, our position is before God. Never forget that you're always before your father. Say amen. There isn't a place you can run or hide that he's not aware. So if you realize that you're always there, he's watching you like a child. Communicate with him. Enjoy him. When you make a mistake, say, I made a mistake. And he just never stops loving you. Remember, this is not the Old Testament. Jesus lives in you. In the Old Testament, people really were dealt with harshly, but I'll tell you later on, that's over lunch. But in the New Testament, we live with Jesus, don't we? The, the devil has to go through Jesus to get to us, doesn't he? I mean, how many believe that? Gosh, you guys are weak. Easy to deceive, are you? No, you shouldn't be able to be touched when you're walking in the Spirit, right? Why are people touched then? Because definitely there's a couple things might be. Now, please, no condemnation. Number one, maybe you're not doing what you said you're doing. In other words, your talk is a little bit more inflated than your actual walk. Now, don't get upset. We need, what do you do? You go to God and say, help me make up the parts that I need inside of me. Because God is the one that grows us up. We don't grow up. We don't decide one day and say, I promise I'll never do that again. How many know that doesn't work? Amen. So you can't live for Jesus only. You must live through Jesus by Jesus. Through Jesus by Jesus. Just like you live, you're in your car and it's the gas that drives the engine. Jesus is your gasoline. Your tank might be low. So, two... 
We're going to cover, we fight in the spirit by the word in Jesus' name. Three, we're going to cover, we bring God to people and places and bring them before God. Don't we? And then four, we have the keys to the kingdom. Take aim and fire. Go with me to 2 Timothy. We're going to look at chapter 2, verse 4. I'm going to give us a warning because this is what you see right now. A lot of the church is still criticizing what's wrong. That would be like me seeing somebody drop a plate. And all I can say is, you shouldn't have dropped that plate. If all we do is criticize what's wrong, then we're not bringing the light. (laughs) Who's deceived? If all we do is discuss others, then we have dimmed the light and put a shade over Jesus. Our job is to get cleansed every morning, to be bright, plugged in, get your phone, God, person charged up, and go out there and love people in Jesus' name. And watch the supernatural begin to happen. Why? You're building a dome of protection about you. You're building a hedge where Satan can't get into. But listen, many Christians today, their light is very dim. They're running their own life. The light has been almost put out. But listen, you can never put the light of Jesus out in you. You can just cover him up. That's why you see many Christians today acting like the world is they haven't been with God in a long time. Just in their mind, they think they're there. Listen, God should be stripping away from us everything that hinders our walk. Say amen. We should be able to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us and run with patience and power and endurance the race, our life that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Not us, him. Say, okay, God, you're not a, there's a lot of work to do in there. Can you say amen? All right, so it says, no one engaged in warfare. This is 2 Timothy 2.4. Entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Exactly what Satan's got the church doing. They're so caught up in everybody else's business. So caught up, they think, they actually think, if I don't pray, nothing's going to get done. Now, that's true in a sense, but you know, one day I was praying really hard, and I was telling God all the things we're doing in prayer, and he says, son, you know, if you never prayed, I'm praying. Hello, give me a little credit here. Someone say, oh, me. All right, so be not entangled in the affairs of this life, that he may please him, that's God, who enlisted him to be a soldier. You see, we're soldiers at some time. We're not an entire soldier all the time. There are other times God brings us in to be in warfare for someone else. Say amen. How can that be if our life is so caught up on us doing our own thing? Listen, never take a job that keeps you away from Sunday church. Make sure you make Bible studies because in a church like this, everything's a follow-up teaching, step by step, precise, you know, until you are built up and strong. Linda and I's conviction has always been to get you to a place with God that you so are in love with Jesus, so protected, so cared for, and you're so given with the word of God that you go about and share your life and your testimony. Say amen. Amen. It's a great thing to have. That's you. All right. First point. Our position is before God. Go with me to John 16. Look at this scripture, 23 and 24. And in that day, the day that Jesus rose from the dead, sent the Holy Spirit in the kingdom, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, in other words, get this, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Say amen. Notice he didn't say, I'll withhold it. I mean, have you heard somebody teach, sometimes we ask God and he says no. Where did you get that? Mr. Religion teach you that? The only time he says no is when we're going to hurt ourselves. If you ask everything according to you know God's love will for your life, he always says yes, but there might be a timing involved. Are you with me? Ask me nothing, but whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. 
Ask and you will what? Receive. That your joy may be made what? You see, God wants you happy. He wants you joyous. He wants you prosperous. He wants you healthy. He doesn't want you focused on you and why this and why that. If we're focused on him, no sickness really can stay long. No illness can attach himself. Can you uh, say, oh, me or oh, amen? Amen. So therefore, listen. Ask the Father in Jesus' name. What I tell everybody is, don't stop. Every day, ask. Not for the same thing like some person that doesn't believe. Ask for it. Ask for greater things. Ask God to change you. You know, like for example, Lord, there's things in me that I don't know that are bothering you. <laughs> Would you please work in my heart and change those things so I'm more pleasing to you and helpful for others? What a wonderful prayer. You know what? There was a time in my life I wouldn't pray a prayer like that because I know God would answer it. <laughs> Can you laugh with me? Say amen, everybody. Preachers that don't have any joy, don't listen. All right, let's go on. All right, just a joke. Go with me to Mark 16. Look at verse 19. So then, okay, God wants you joyful. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, and listen, and sat down at the right hand of God. In other words, we go to Jesus or the Father in Jesus' name. Say amen. Jesus says, Father, I bring my son or daughter, and he goes right before We sit right before the throne of God. Now, it's important that you would have something nice to say. <laughs> I'm convinced sometimes it's a joke. This is a joke. People don't want to pray because you're not going to be face to face with God. All right, go with me to Matthew, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 4. Look at 14 and 16. This tells us and encourages us to come to the throne. Amen? Can you say amen? Our position is before the throne of God. Now, as you go to Hebrews 4, 14, and 16, let me quote a scripture for those that are writing it down. Ephesians chapter 1, at verse 5, it says that God has predestined, originally designed for humans to live before him in love. Hello. God did not plan for Adam to sin. He had a plan if Adam sinned, but he did not plan Adam's sin. Somebody said, you want, uh, want a good one? Say, I want a good one. Somebody asked me the other day, and they always ask me this. I don't know too many can answer it. Only God can. And this is what he told me. People will say, well, God, did God know that Adam was going to sin? And they look at me. Well, and I look at him and I say, well, doesn't God know everything? Well, I guess he did then. I said, no, you're assuming for example, if you have a child, do you look for the bad in them or do you look for the good in them? <laughs> so God, who is all perfect and all good, does not look for the bad in you. So he looked for the good in Adam. He knew Adam would be tempted, knew Adam could sin, but he didn't believe he would. He because, now listen, because he put the goods in Adam and the goods is his very life. But was he surprised that he sinned? Oh, no, oh, no. What did God say? We forget what God said to Eve and to Adam. What did he say? Do not eat of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. Did he say, go ahead and sniff it? Hang around it and talk to the devil that made it, created it, to put the poison in it? No, but that's what Eve did. See, so you've you got to read the Hebrew. And so they kind of hung around and laid with the idea. So Satan filled their head and their minds with an alternative gospel. He's the Antichrist. And says, God didn't say. And we got just a little glimpse of it. So what did the kids do? They ate. Changed their DNA, Daryl. And suddenly we became fallen. We died first spiritually and then physically 927 years later. Hello. All of us died in Adam. But if you think about it, if our DNA was changed, that means all of you and I in our flesh. Everyone say, flesh, flesh. is not my friend. Not my friend. That's why when a Christian tries to live for God naturally, they will always fall short. 
Because in your flesh is sin, not in your spirit now. Not in your spirit. God lives in our spirit. That's been taken out. But see, you have a three-part being, your spirit, soul, and living a body. Your body is not going to heaven. It has to be changed, doesn't it? Oh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, so don't walk in it. It's a trash heap, even though it's debonair. <laughs> macho, macho. You know, pretty, pretty. That's just the flesh. That's your earth suit. Listen, don't walk around with an ugly earth suit. You know, be happy, be joyous. And I'm joking with you. See, I didn't know that. It's, the idea is to learn so you work with how the system is set up so we work with God and not against him. Say amen. So nothing in the flesh can please God. So we do things from our heart and the spirit and love. Can you say amen? So seeing that we have a great high priest, Jesus, who's passed through the heavens, thank God, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Stop talking worldly stuff. Stop talking Jesus and cussing out of the side of your mouth. Shut the bitter fountain off. That's your flesh. Let us hold fast our confession. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in a time of need. God's into the helping business, but we have not because we have not. So a couple of points. Church, our place, our position is before the throne of God. You're always there. Jesus is our mediator, our lawyer. Two, we are spiritually seated in Christ in heavenly places. Okay, we're physically here. We fight there for lost souls, people in our relatives, for, for our own nation, because we're before the throne of God, bringing God by the prayer of God's word into the earth. Say amen. Well, I thought his kingdom already came. Yes, the spiritual kingdom, but we establish his authority by his word. Hello? And if somebody down the street doesn't know Jesus and you introduce Jesus to them, you have just brought the kingdom and you place them into God's hands. Nothing more beautiful than that. Remember, there is no devil before the throne of God. Say amen. So he doesn't know what's going on. Stay there as often as you can. In the spirit. In the spirit. Oh, I didn't think I could walk in the spirit every day and all day. Why not? Who told you that? The devil, I bet. And he used somebody who is religious. Listen, always remember, never take, listen to me carefully, life's experiences above the word. If your experiences is for some reason you prayed, you didn't receive your healing yet, don't tell everybody, I guess God doesn't want me healed. That's what I mean by that. And there are plenty of people that do that by accident. They have the Christianese talk, and then they have the, boy, I'm a human being talk. Don't do that. It'll make you powerless before God. He wants you to enjoy your life, be filled with God, to know his principles. Say amen, somebody. And the weapons of our warfare, warfare as children of God before the throne in the kingdom are not natural, but spiritual. Therefore, we need to operate in the spirit. They never fail when they're sent out. Hello? The armor doesn't have holes in it. Say amen. Jesus' name is above every name. The light chases away the darkness. The idea is you have to believe in that. These are things God's word and what Jesus said. Because we're told a lie and often believe it, then we're, things are hidden from us until we discover it in the Spirit. Say amen. Never go hand in hand or mind to mind with the devil. Christians do it all the time. You're never going to outthink him. Remember he, can't, now remember, he can't read your mind. But if you're trying to battle things in your mind, he can see the stress there. I, I often said I can smell smoke because the cogwebs are burning. People who live too much in their head have a lot of problems. Now, I'm not picking on anybody in particular. 
I'm saying don't be that person. Lean not to your own understanding. Ask God to help you with his wisdom, help you discern and sort out the day, what to do, what things first, and how to enjoy your walk. You maybe have a busy day, but don't lose your joy over it. Come on. Come on. Aren't you a little more powerful than that, walking with God? All right, second point. We fight in the Spirit by His Word in Jesus' name. Now, a long time ago, my pastor taught us that the Holy Spirit's the current. It's, he brought the power during Pentecost. Say amen. The word is the cord, like an electrical cord. The current flows through the, come on, the cord, through the word. So the power is present. Jesus said when he was preaching in his own hometown, he says the power of God was present to heal everybody, but only a few got healed. Why? Because their head was in the way. You see, God's power is here, but you got to use the cord to plug in, say amen, and the current, the Holy Spirit flows by the word, say amen, you can't separate the two, so if you're smart, you plug in and you speak the word so that the spirit of God can flow, and you say, well, that's great, so listen, now let me explain, in the walls of this place, there's current, but it's not until there's a demand does the current flow. Hope you got that. So you plug in the toaster, you make a demand, and it pulls current out. You are the pull the curtain out, the current out person. I'm trying to give you a physical, mental picture. So the power is there. The word of God is where the current flows through. So when you speak the word on people, stop talking about them, start speaking the word on them. And the current's ready to go. It just tovers over them like over the face of the water. And then there's one thing that turns the switch on. Can you tell me? In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. That's why everything's to be done in the name of Jesus. By the Spirit in his word. Right. So let's take a look at the scripture. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 10 through 14. We fight in the spirit. That means we're not touched after we stop praying against the enemy. You see, what a lot of Christians don't do is once they take authority over a few things, then they don't shut down, plead the blood, and, and then back off. Hello? And, and dismantle into that war room and just get before God and just love on him. There's no real formula. But sometimes they don't. They take that same intensity from prayer because it's important and they take it out and that's where you get hit you get a counterattack, and we get counterattack because we think we think somehow our armor has a hole in it here's let me sing it to you armor has a hole in it and you might be attacked your armor doesn't have any hole in it it only dims now you're going to i'm going to i have to address this god said You'll read in the scripture, it says, put on the armor of God. Come on, it says that, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, but here's the, the religious interpretation of that. That means that you get so dirty every day, you have to put it back on because it fell off. Now, if you think about that logically, the Bible says the armor is light. Who's light? <laughs> God is. Uh, who's good and has no evil? So you never have the armor fall off. It just dims or gets brighter. How does it do that? By how much time you spend with God. It doesn't take much of God to get you very bright. Hello? Because your mom always said you were pretty dim. Just a joke. Very good. Thank you, Mike, for laughing. And really, if you think about it, we go in, plug in, and we charge up. The light suit comes on. Hello. Then when we say, Father, in Jesus' name, God expects you to know how to pray and how to be focused and targeted. And when you pray, say amen. amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the Lord, and in the power of his might, in his power of his might. 
put on or go to God, charge up the whole, the armor of God that you may be able to what? Here's what we don't know about the armor. Who's the armor? Jesus says. Who's the light? Jesus says. Who's the one that has all the wisdom? Jesus. So guess what? You step back and let him come forward. You won't have to worry about doubt because he overrides that. You won't have to worry about your flesh because he overrides that. Why? Because you went and got charged up and God took over. Remember, we follow him. We don't tell him what to do. So that's how we put on the armor of God, that we'll be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. How many here believe God's far smarter than the enemy? Amen. That suit you wear, his name is Jesus. Yes. He's far smarter than the enemy. Please pay closer attention. <clears throat> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are, are Satan's kingdom, how they're set up. Against principality, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And therefore, take up or plug in. See, I, I wonder about that. So I'm going to go back and study that. Because if we always think we're dropping the armor, then we're going to waste a lot of time picking it up. And who would be behind us wasting time? Yeah. Think about it. God is very logical, pure in how he does something. It's man sometimes how they religiously explain something can kind of keep, keep us a little iffy. Are you still with me? Go ahead. And then he says, against spiritual hosts, and he says, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That's every day. There's evil and good in every day. Have you noticed? Look at the good. Focus on the good. And Jesus will help you to do that. Withstand in the evil done. And having done all to stand, what are we to do? Did you see, do you see that it says, frail your arms, scream at the devil? No, God's trying to tell us through Paul how to fight. No, you're always before God. So in Father, in Jesus' name, you're before the throne. Sit down, relax, and begin to target with your words the power of God. Remember, the power is present. You need to speak the word or in line with the word, and the Spirit has now a cord to follow. You need to wrap the word around them or the situation, and then in the name of Jesus, you release it. That package now is delivered by the angels. Leave it alone. It's on its way. Can you say amen? amen. Now you thank him. Why? Because you delivered a torpedo. And it's one that's run by a laser. So it's on target. Christians, no more shotgun prayers. Somebody says, well, what are you doing? I'm praying. I says, well, how are you praying? I'm bombarding heaven. Well, you're 750 miles off. The throne of God is in the center, and it's 15 miles square. Religion. God hates religion. It goes nowhere. It's always in the way. Amen? Are you with me? Church, we are not to fight against flesh and blood. What does the enemy have the church doing? Criticizing. Oh, terrible. Are we supposed to be doing that? What if God's child is doing something wrong? Is it our job to go over to the neighbor's house and tell them? Come on, don't be spiritually stupid. Our job is to pray for them and let God handle his children. Say amen. Amen. Some wisdom from above there. All right, so let's go on. Let me continue to say, we are before the throne of God in the Spirit, where we use the sword of the Spirit. Imagine it as it being a laser sword, the word of God against the enemy. You don't have to yell at the enemy. You just say, Father, in Jesus' name, I sent forth your word. The enemy's trying to do this and this and this. You can see what he does. He hates to be exposed. And so, Lord, I expose him and I release your word. Now, in Jesus' name, go and destroy the works of darkness and liberate the captives in Jesus' name. 
A little prayer like that can completely set a neighborhood free. We have to do one thing that Christians, I think, the enemy's keeping them from doing, staying very consistent and faithful. Are you consistent? Are you faithful? That means God can count on you. If you're not, then you're off the wall because we're lively stones being built up. I'm just joking. <laughs> I used to be that way. I just went where I felt to go. I did what I felt to do. And you know what God said? He says, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I don't really know. Isn't it evident? All right, let's move on. Let's go to our next point. We bring people and places to God, don't we? When we pray for them, Father, I bring this nation to you in Jesus' name. I bless this nation. I ask that you will pluck up and root out those that don't belong here, those that are, are misusing their authority. I ask that you send in now reinforcements from the angel and, and angels and bring in the people, plant them, cause them to grow and flourish, and that will love the Constitution, love other people, and actually will honor you at least or love you. Thank you, Father. Now, I release Jesus' name, that package. And I keep it there. And I refuse to take that out of your hands. You know what God is doing now? He's working that out. So what do we do? We overstep and we go, man, I sure wish God would. No, look at what's going wrong here. And then we start stepping over our prayer. Don't step on your prayer. So, hello. How many has ever used mics? Maybe Colin, if you're watching. How many when somebody stepped over you when you're talking on, on the mic or something? Breaker, breaker, candlestick maker, and somebody talks over you, it's called, you know, hello? How many here are hearing what God is saying to you? Or are we talking over him? So we bring people and places to God and God to people and places. Say amen. Go with me to 1 John 5, 16. You're going to love this. This is how powerful you are in Jesus' name. Verse 16, 1 John 5. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin, tell your neighbor. Start a rumor. Cause a coup. No, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin, which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. Now, what in the world is that? Quickly, the sin leading to death is never to let God into your heart. Say amen. The next part is to tell people Christians are all of the devil. That's the next part you want to avoid. Hello? Now, how many know we shouldn't be saying that, huh? So a sin leading to death is to never be saved. Okay? But there are sins that don't lead to death, aren't there? How many anger... Come on, I used to have a problem with anger in my old man. Frustration, some people get, you know, they just, you know, we have little shortcomings. These are shortcomings. These are sins. Because of that nature, we make mistakes. Hello. So there are sins that we can be forgiven. So let's say, Scott, I'm going to use you. I see Scott so frustrated that he, who knows, he does something, I won't, don't try to get your magic going. And I say, oh Lord, I know it's because he's hurting. So right now I place him on your altar, and anything that's worrying him or concerned, this is your son. And I ask, do you give him life instead of punishment? Are you paying attention to intercessors? And God will reach down and give them, move them out of that position. Hello? But what do we do? Oh, did you see this? Look what he's doing. Every finger you point, there's three more pointing back to you. you got to realize our job is not to judge. It's to discern. If I serve you food and you don't think it's good enough to eat, please don't eat it. And if you think somebody's preaching a message that you don't agree with, don't criticize it. Just don't eat of it. Hey, don't beat the messenger. Remember, every preacher and teacher has to preach and teach within the knowledge they know. They should never preach things they don't know. 
wave at me. I've got a great big audience back there, Daryl, so you're not the only one <laughs> in the camera, okay? So, amen. So, how many know that you and I have struggled sometimes? So, let's say John Doe. Father, I, I'm going to show you what to do here. Father, John Doe is having struggles in his marriage. So, I place John Doe on your altar. Now, listen carefully. And I ask you to go in and help him. Lord, open his eyes to whatever he needs. I'm not going to limit you, God, by my words, but I am going to send you into his life, into his family's life, to his marriage. Help give them what they need and hear and help them to be a listener. See, I'm painting with the wire of God's word and your words where the Holy Spirit's going. But I did not limit God from choosing how he's going to do it. Can you say amen? We should never tell God how to do it. We just should invite God to do it. And then give him the liberty to carry it out as his wisdom sees fit. Say amen. But folks, I want to let you know, there are some times as Christians, you're going to run into somebody who actually has a devil. And you're going to have to learn to cast out that devil because they're being tormented. Let me tell you how you recognize if you're being harassed by a devil. Now, I want you to analyze yourself as I'm, I'm sharing with you. Now, they're Christians that love the Lord, and they'll be going along, and some, all of a sudden, some kind of idea would jump in their mind, and immediately they go up and they find themselves doing it. That is not God. If you're headed and doing things in the rhythm with God, God is not going to make you jump to the left or jump to the right, say amen. He's not going to say, do this right now when you're trying to listen to him. Say amen. He's not contrary to himself. But within you and I, we still battle with our flesh. Say oh me. And you know, like me, let's pretend this is anger. Let's say there's a spirit behind all my life since I was a kid to, to make me angry, to get me in that position where I'm habitually angry. So there's a spirit behind something. If somebody can't quit lying, there's a spirit behind that. Hello? Okay. Yeah, they have a problem with lying, but now it's become a habitual thing, and that's, they just made friends with that spirit. So let's just say lying. Everyone say, how many know that lying's bad? So if you ever have a problem where you're catching yourself doing something wrong, say, I bind that spirit of lying that wants me to do this or do that, wants to make them do this and do that. When you bind it, that means literally the angels come and they bind it up. Now you got to put it somewhere. And so, Lord, I, I bind it up, remove its assignment, and I place it. Everyone watch me. Eyes up here. Everyone watch me. And you put it behind the wall of the curtain. Can you get that picture of that? Put it behind the curtain and you let it go. And it's no longer there. But what do we do? We try to dig for it. Where is it? Learn to bind the devil and put him behind the curtain. Now, folks, what you don't know is people in the world, we have a lot of authority even if we don't know God. And through seances and witchcraft, we pull things out of this curtain that we don't want to face. So what we need to do is when people show manifestations of antichrist and things that are not working out, bind the spirit that's causing them to do that. Bind it up in Jesus' name. I forbid you to do that anymore to them. And I, now I've removed your assignment and I bind you behind the wall and you longer can come back out. Do you understand? Don't take it back out. Now can you imagine so many spirits have been led into the world but if all the Christians bound them up and put them back behind the curtain, don't you think revival will start breaking loose? All revival comes forth. Jesus sent us out with a commission. He says, go into all the world and preach the good news, the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them, my belief. First thing is cast out the devil. 
when Lynn and I move on to this property, we bound the spirits who are in control here. We bound them up, cast them out, removed their assignment. This whole property, five acres, is totally sanctified. You walk any place on it, you can sense God. And we bound them up. You're no longer in control. And we put them behind the curtain, and we keep them there. Say amen. In your house, you do the same thing. Do you have children? Do you have parents? Do you have something? If you feel the spirit of fear, you bind it in Jesus' name. You render it ineffective and you put it behind the curtain. Say amen. amen. Leave it there. So you bring people to God and, and bring God to people. That's how important you are. You can even get people to be forgiven of their sins. Go with me to Luke 10. Look at 1 through 4. Very important we see this, Luke 10, 1 through 4. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them out two by two before the, his face, before his face. We're always before the Lord. Into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest that he send out laborers into the harvest field. How many here know we need more laborers out there? More people sharing Jesus, their testimony. Not preaching religion. Not shoving it down people's throat. Man, I lead people to the Lord. I had a guy here fix our gazebo. Guess what? When he was done, he received Jesus in his heart. There was a fellow I met in the store. His name was Chris. He came here and got saved. A guy that we had hamburgers with. His name was Levon. Okay, short for a long name. He was our, 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 our servant, uh, our waiter. He came to church, got born again. Share the word. Don't let the devil lower your eyes and get caught up in the affairs of this life. Are you with me? And then final point, we have the keys of the kingdom. Say, I do. Take aim and fire. So in John chapter 20, verse 21 through 23 says, So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, listen, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then he said, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. God is saying, You're so powerful, if you won't forgive somebody... You can't get forgiven. How do I know if I've forgiven somebody or not? Just because you have memories of a bad thing doesn't mean it's unforgiveness. It's when you talk about them bad all the time. That's unforgiveness. Because you're picking the scab of the wound and reinfecting yourself. Listen, once you forgive somebody, you simply say, so-and-so, I forgive them, Lord, it's hard, but I forgive them and I put them behind the curtain right into your hands. And I leave them there. Now, you're going to have memories, and the enemy's going to throw things. That does not mean unforgiveness. That just simply means that's a memory, and God will wash that away eventually. Don't be tricked. Remember, Satan's a deceiver to pull you away from your walk of tranquility and peace and love with God. Say, oh, me. And whoever sins you retain, you refuse to forgive, they are retained. So it's bad for them and bad for you. Matthew 16, please look at this one. 18 and 19. And I also say to you that you are Peter. He's talking about Peter. Peter said he was a Christ. And on this rock, the revelation of God's word, hearing my words and doing them, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christians today, they hear the word, but they don't do it. Don't get mad at me. What areas in your life you're not doing the word are the areas that break down a lot. Silence is golden. Golden. The areas of our life that break down a lot are the areas that we be don't become a doer of the word. If the Bible says pray diligently and you're not praying diligently, don't, don't freak out if you start to break down with symptoms and stuff. 
because you're not under the command of God and his protection. You're sort of lily willy just applying God once in a while. You have to be a doer of the word, say amen. You have to hear and do. Hear and do. I got another second verse. Hear and do. Same as the first. Hear and do. Hear and do. Pray, pray. You see, the idea is every little step we grow. Amen? You become a wise man, unable to be shaken. And the gates of hell will not prevail. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. How many here know we can bind the devil? Amen. Don't rail on him. Just simply say, if the enemy is having havoc, just say, Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. That means you render him ineffective. He can't no longer do that. Then you have to do, you have to put him somewhere. Now I put you back. I remove that assignment. And I forbid you to run that scenario on me again. Remember, he runs scenarios on you. The, the, the things that keep happening to you seem like a pattern, don't they? Well, that's why. He has nothing new. So if you know that's how he operates, you can feel things coming back, going out of line, be wise enough to stop and tune in. And you know, a majority of Christians don't know how to do that. Please come to church here consistently. We'll train you how. So you and your family and everybody else can be blessed. Well, I could get that anywhere I want to go. There you go thinking again. If that was so, why are things still falling apart? Think about it. Don't get mad at me. Mark 16, verse 15 through 18 tells us, listen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news. Gospel is good news. It's not telling you about judgments and, and this and all that. That's not good news. That's a distraction. Yes, that's happening. But if all I do is talk about what's happening, how can I ever have vision to change? Stop talking about the obvious. Start believing for change. Hello, are you with me? He that believe in this baptized shall be saved. He that does not believe automatically is condemned. And these signs will follow them to believe. Wave at you. Wave at me if you're a believer. You there are by camera. Amen. So these signs should follow you. Well, I don't see them happening. Let's get that happening for you. Didn't say you have to do anything else but believe, didn't it? These signs will follow them to believe. In my name they shall what? You have to deal with the devil because he still thinks he's in charge of the world. So if you're going to put your kid in school, take authority over everything. Amen. If you're going to take a vacation, months ahead, pray over everything. You're going to go out with the buddies, make sure the buddies don't bring sin into your camp, drinking, partying, cussing, and you're trying to be the happy Christian because you won't have a good time. Let's grow up. Say amen. Oh, yeah. I done spoke to somebody. I don't know don't how that got out of there. You can't flirt with the world, expect to walk in victory. Move right along. They cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. Listen, everyone that's born again has their tongues reunited. They don't always speak in them. It's up to them whether they yield or not, or if they can or not. But all of you have that language, because you have groanings and things that in your spirit that you know are carrying things. You have God dwelling in your spirit. Say Amen. So you're supposed to be speaking in the spirit often. Why? Because it charges us up. Move the devil out of the way. Charge yourself up. Why? Because if people try to poison you, you can deal with the devils in people. Handle serpents. That's what that means. Handle serpents in people's lives. And if they poison you, try to get you to drink any deadly thing. It could be doctrinally. It could be actually physical poisoning. Remind me, ask me sometime during lunch about the witch that tried to poison me and, it, and I, all that happened was her husband got saved. I don't know what happened to her. And I hate to think what she did with the food. Yeah, you know, but that's another, I have so many wonderful stories. But listen, Satan can't get in on you when you're lit up. When you're full of God do you think if God's hanging around you and dwelling in you, you're all lit up, that Satan could show up? Come on, no! 
You're full of light. How could Satan even approach you? The key is you're not full of light like you think you are because you're agitated all the time. You're frustrated. You're full of flesh. And so if you want that to change, you say, God, I've been fleshy today. Please heal this matter. <laughs> Moving right along. I want to dwell there. But if you don't bring yourself to God like you're supposed to do daily, you'll never become anything more than what our flesh is holding us in bondage. Amen. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? Folks, my pastor taught us. He says, you know what, everybody? He taught 30 of us. We're all ministers today. Very successful. We've always had the blessings because he was a wonderful teacher. He says... Every time you pray, Father, in Jesus' name, healing comes. But whether it's received or not is up to the receiver. Your job is not to get people healed. Your job is to preach the word on healing, and people are to believe. And if God reveals to them how to do it, and they really have an eagerness for God, he will show them they'll get their healing. Everybody that came to Jesus received healing, except only a couple. And they didn't see Jesus as a healer. They saw Jesus as the carpenter's son. How do you see Jesus? How do you see your walk with Jesus? Because as a man thinketh, so he becomes. Church, with so much authority as believers in prayer, we must take the time to become more effective and more targeted. Say amen. We, through prayer, bring change and deliverance to the lost. Father, I send you forth in Jesus' name. We actually bring God into and on any given situation. Father, I send you forth in Jesus' name. Another thing is we ask, then we believe we receive. So ask and be specific and targeted. Folks, when you, how many has been in the military? Did you go through basic training? They teach you how to shoot, don't they? How to hit the target. I got Christians that are shooting each other and themselves in the legs when we should be targeted in our prayers and picking off what the enemy's doing and bringing souls. And listen, some of you are really up in age. You can't get around and evangelize, but you certainly from your prayer closet can change your lives of those around you if you become targeted and effective on how you pray. Say Amen. That's what Satan doesn't want. He wants you to be a shotgun bird hunter. Boom! You make a lot of noise and you do a lot of damage. Targeted, specific targeted. You got a business, target yourself out three, four months. Your business, who you want to do business with, all of it's by faith. You got a brand new marriage, target your future, how you want to run things and do things and say, Lord, you're going to have to help me get this done. You see, target yourself in the positive, target what the enemy's doing. You can tell he gives himself away. He cannot hide what he's doing. So if you see a lot of lying and deception, you know a spirit of lying and deception's there. Hello. I had to cast a spirit of dissension out of this, this place because people would sit here and they would discuss things they shouldn't. Actually brought a spirit in here. We had to cast it out several times. When you're in this little square box, Everything you say be sweet, sweet, sweet. Say amen. Because if you start arguing with each other and you do that, you're going to bring a spirit in. And you don't want to do that. Say amen. This is a holy place. This is where we all gather. But you don't hear too many pastors saying that. They have their elders and ushers keeping everything bound up. Say amen. Last point for you. Say, thank God. All right. We are soldiers for God, folks. God is going to require us how to learn how to pray that way. Say amen. He needs us to. Remember, we have to ask him to go in. Hello? How many here have asked for God to go in and shut every abortion clinic's door? Yeah. If you haven't, try doing that every day for about a month. In Jesus' name. That you command the doctors, they will lose heart and see the terror, and they'll quit. How many of you are praying for your country? Well, then be more specific. Name some names. This is in your private prayer life. Call out some names that you know are doing not so good. 
And you can command them according to Jeremiah 1, 15 through. God spoke to Jeremiah, but he speaks to us in this last day church. You can pluck up and root out those that do evil. God's face is already against those that do evil. So you don't just say, please, God, do something about what's going on. No, God says, I want you to pray me in there. Pray me in there. You only have to do it once. Father, you see the House of Representatives? <laughs> they need help. I pray you in there in Jesus' name. You go in, search every heart, every mind. Remove those that don't belong and put in their place those that do. You see, you're non-biased then, and now you move on to the next thing. Because then you say in Jesus' name and you place it in God's hands. Are you still with me? Are you receiving good stuff? Great. So in your warfare, in your prayer time, you're not fighting for your own life. If you are, you're not spending enough time with God. You shouldn't be battling over your personal life. Didn't you give your life to Christ? So who's running it? Jesus, right? Well, you guys, I can tell the devil already knows. He knows your weaknesses. But we're supposed to let Jesus run it, right? Nothing can get through him. The shepherd always sleeps in front of the sheep pen. But see, we're not always doing what we're supposed to do. And listen, it's just little things because of habitual habits. These things, if you're not careful, will chip away and cause openings where the enemy eventually will catch you at it. When a spirit leaves a man, it walks by dry places seeking rest. It says, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get some help, and we'll go back and make his life or her life my home again. Hello, you see what I'm saying? So when you know your life's in Christ now, you do have an enemy some far out there somewhere that is trying to figure out how to shut you down. Don't be stupid enough to think you can live from day to day without prayer, without some teaching in the word. God gets his children's attention by his word first. Hello? Not by your feelings, not by circumstances of life. So therefore, we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart, Lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge and be aware and communicate with him, and he will be able to direct our path. If you've got a blessing out of that, will you give the Lord praise? Amen.